Hey guys, today we're going to learn about quadrilateral angles. So our objective is to find missing quadrilateral angles, and this is page 59. Well, the first thing you need to know is the sum of all the angles of a quadrilateral, and that special number is 360 degrees, which happens to be the same number in a circle. All right, so if you look here, I've got three angles and I'm missing one. Well, in that situation, you're going to want to first add up all the angles you already know about. So we have 112, 95, and 80, and 5, 6, 7, 17, 18, 287. So I have 287 degrees accounted for already, and I need to get up to 360. So how do I find that? Well, now I can just subtract. So 360 minus 287. 10 minus 7 is 3, got to borrow again. 15 minus 8, that'd be 7. So that means x equals 73 degrees. And what kind of shape is this? Well, it would just be a quadrilateral because it's not one of the special types we learned about before. All right, so let's try another one. Now, it looks like I only have one labeled here, one angle, but because I have these little boxes in the corner, what do those mean? Well, that means that these are 90 degrees. So this would be the same as we did here. I already know that 90 and 90, well, that equals 180. And then we have to add another 82. So that'd be 2, 18, 19, 20, 222, 224, 25, 26. All right, so that's how many degrees we already know about. How do we find the other one? Let's subtract. 360 minus 262, and I've got to borrow, so that'd be 8, 15 minus 6 is 9, and that would be 0, so x equals 98 degrees. Now I want to stop and make sure it's reasonable so far. I look here, this looks acute, and 73 degrees is acute, so that's good. This one looks obtuse, and 98 degrees is obtuse, so I think we're good so far. Alright, let's look at the next shape. Well, I noticed that I have this little marker with the 90 degrees in three corners. Well, then what shape is this? It looks like a square to me, and in fact it is a square because it has all right angles. If you have three angles that are already 90 degrees, then that fourth one has to also be because these are parallel and these are parallel, which makes that have to be a 90 degree angle. Also, if I do 90 times three, zero and 27, so that's 270 degrees, and then 360 minus 270, and you get 90. So X equals 90 degrees. All right, now let's look at the next one. Okay, so here I'm trying to figure out what this angle is, and I know that this angle is 120, but they didn't tell me either one of these. So what am I supposed to do? Well, this is a case where you'd want to be able to identify this shape. This is a parallelogram. So if I look here, I know about parallelograms that the opposite angles are equivalent. So that means that this would be the same as this. So this is going to be the same. And it means that this 120 degrees is also going to be right here. And I'll put two lines here to make them different. All right. So I already know about these two. So let's first put add these together and get them out of the way. So we have 120 and 120, 0, 4, 2, so that's 240 degrees. So let me subtract that from 360, so I don't have to worry about that anymore. 0, 2, 1, okay? So I have 120 degrees left over for these two angles, and since they are both the same, I would then take 120 and divide it by 2. So that would go in six times, which is 12. Bring down your zero, and two goes into zero, zero times. So x equals 60 degrees. All right, so don't forget that you can do, use that trick when you have a rhombus or a parallelogram because the opposite angles are equal. All right, and last one. Now this one's tricky. I don't have any angles that I already know. I just have this 3x and an x. 
There are some markings that I want to make sure I see though, and that's these lines right here. This marking right here is the same as this corner, so that means if this is 3x, I could also call this 3x. And this angle is na named x, and it has the same marking right here, so that means this I could also name x. So now, what do I do? Well, I know that when I add all the angles, it's going to be equal to 360. So let me show you what we can do. I can do x plus another 3x plus 3x plus x. All I did is take all four of these and put them added. And I know that's going to be equal to 360 degrees. All right. Well, in, when we were learning algebra, we learned about combining like terms. And all of these are like terms because they have the same variable to the same power. So I'm going to combine them. 3x and an x would be 4x. 5, 6, 7x, 8x. Because remember, you can pretend there's like a 1 in front of an x when you don't see a coefficient. So if I add all those together, that would make 8x equals 360 degrees. Well, now it looks like an equation. And we've learned how to solve equations. I see an 8 next to x, which means that we're multiplying. So then how would I solve that? I would do the inverse and divide. So I'm going to divide this side by 8 and divide this side by 8. These will cancel out because that'd be 1. And so really I just need to divide 360 divided by 8. Well that goes in 4 times which is 32. And then 8 goes into 45 times which is 40. So that means x equals 45 degrees. So then now I know that this angle is 45 degrees. And then this angle, how would I find it? Well, it's 3x, so I'd have to do 45 times 3. 45 times 3, that's 15. 3 times 4 is 12, plus 1 is 13. So that would make 135. So then this angle would be 135 degrees. So then this would be 135 degrees, and this would be 45 degrees. All right, two more problems, and now we have some word problems. So let's see, in a quadrilateral, each of two angles has a measure of 37 degrees. Another angle has a measure of 143 degrees. What is the measure of the remaining angle? And what type of quadrilateral could this be? All right, so first of all, let's list these out. We have four angles. One, two, three, four. All right, it says two angles each are 37. So 37 and then another 37. We have one that's 143, and then this is what I need to find my last angle. Well, that is a lot like this. So, let's add first. So 14, 15, 16, 17, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 217, and then 360 minus 217. So that's three, that's four, that's one. So we have this last angle has to be 143 degrees. Well, I've got two of the same here and two of the same here. So it says, what type of quadrilateral could this be? Well, let's think. What's a type of quadrilateral that has two angles that could be the same and the other two angles be the same? Well, I'm thinking it could be a parallelogram. It could also be a rhombus because those have opposite angles that are equal. And there's one more. It could also be a trapezoid because I could have these two top angles be 143 degrees and these two bottom angles be 37 degrees. All right, last question. The first angle of a quadrilateral measures 120 degrees. The second angle is 70% of the first angle. The third angle is 10 less than the second angle. What is the last angle? Ooh, there, that is complicated and there are many steps. So let's start over and we'll start with the first one. The first angle is 120. All right, we got that one. 120 degrees. I know I'm going to have four angles. All right. The second angle is 70% of the first angle. So don't put a 70 here or 0.70. 
It's 70% of the 120. Well, that's percent of a number. So 120 times 0.70, zero, 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 put your placeholder, zero, 14, seven, eight, zero, zero, four, eight, and there's two spots, so two spots. So now I know my second angle is 84 degrees. The third angle is 10 less than the second, so 84 minus 10. Well, that would be 74 degrees. What is the last angle? Okay, so now that I've done this previous work, I can just do what I did over here or over here, and I can find the last angle. So 120 plus 84 plus 74, that's 8, 15, 15, 17, 278. And then what do I subtract from? 360 minus 278, that'd be 2. 15 minus 7 is 8, and that'd be 0. So then this last angle has to be 82 degrees. Okay, so make sure you look over this stuff and you're very familiar because you might see it again. And thanks for watching.